What up, Talking Fight fans? Thanks for tuning in to today's return episode of Knuckle Up. And yes, I have a good one for you. Today, we're sitting down with a young man that I've been profiling over the last couple of years. A man that I told you is going to be a world champion one of these days. A man who is undefeated and still is years later. Please help me welcome to the studio for this wonderful interview, my man, Jalen Skywalker. Yo, what's the deal? Man, the myth and the legend. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me, man. You were right. The intro was a little different. A little different, a little different. I kind of like this one. This is a little I better than the last one. Yeah, Yo, like man, it. it's been two years. You know, we sat down a couple times a couple years ago. You know, I've been, been talking about you since, you know, you turned pro, telling everybody out there, you're the one to watch. You're the, yo, man, you are the Jedi of the featherweight division, as, as I like to say it. And doing it well, very well. Um, honestly, let's uh, let's just get right into it, man. Two years ago till now, what has been? Uh, what have you been up to? Man, I've been fighting. I've been fighting to get a fight. You know, last year I had thirteen fights canceled on me. This year I thought I was out of the woods, but had a other bad um, management contract and just dealing with that. But I finally got a word. Got with my guys from um, England, and the future is bright. You know, excellent. I, excellent. I know we were talking about it there off camera. I don't know if you you're allowed to say it yet out there, but official, yeah, it's official today. There you uh, go. My partner with Matro, my gym is Churchill Boxing Club in Santa Monica, California, and we're partnering up. And the the future is bright. You know, we're going to have a lot of guys coming from England or even their USA based guys, and this is going to be the first gym that they could train at. So it's a lot more going to be coming my way. Oh man, lots more. Finally, yeah. fi fi finally, we'll get you some fights, eh? Because honestly, you were super busy 2021, 2022. One fight, you had 13 cancel on you, right? Something yeah. like that. Like, I could tell you a story. I had a fight scheduled, I believe April, March, and I made weight, did my weight cut, woke up in the morning, got out the shower. I get a call from my manager at that time, and he was like, you won't believe this, but your opponent on the bus drive over here, the cartel stopped him, and he got pistol whipped. So I don't know if that's real, but, yeah, my opponent got pistol whipped, and I had to refund all the tickets. It, it was a mess. <laughs> either either he, either he got pistol whipped or he didn't want no smoke, man, because honestly, Jalen, I, I got to tell you, man, your footwork has – improved impeccably over the last couple of years what what are you doing to work on it what like let the fans know how you're working that man because honestly the way you can spin out the way that you're moving around the ring now it's just it shows like a veteran it could be kind of ironic because my coach is pedro pedro neme he's from argentina i started training with pedro at the age of 19 years old okay and i started training with him he basically broke my style down added to what i was already good at and he was teaching me how to be more relaxed because before that I was very stiff. I still have tendencies of that. Right. And it's kind of ironic because he's from Argentina. Argentina is like known for having all the best soccer players like Diego right. Maradona, uh, Leo Messi, and they have like great footwork. So it kind of, I know it's two yeah. different sports, but we found a way to like mix it in in a way. And he's um very precise, insane. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, meticulous about the exact things that I have to do, you know? Okay, so he's got, a, he's got like a real regiment in place, makes you stick to it to a T, very meticulous training. Yeah. It's, you know what, it's, it's paying off. It's paying off. What, what, what do you, what do you believe has been your best improvement since uh, switching over? Experience. Becoming an adult. I was a teenager. Now I'm 21 yeah. years old. You know, um, the thing that threw me off with this coach is we woke up in the morning a lot of times, a lot of 5 a.m. training training sessions, a lot of preparing and setting my night up before, you know, it's like I'm a professional fighter. It's a lot of sacrifice, you know, driving, because I live in L.A., driving to where we have to meet at will be like 30, 40 minutes and learning how to wake up early, fucking three hours, four <laughs> hours a week and just – just going through it. I learned a lot of things, man. I trained really, really hard. I trained so hard 
I trained myself into a hospital. My body shut down how hard I was training. So um, into my body, um, learning things. I, I sparred with Devin Haney um, before he fought Lomachenko, and I learned a lot of things from that guy. I, I give him my hats off to him. I learned a lot. I learned how to work without overworking but being effective. And he knows how to do that perfectly. Okay, so would you say that's probably the best thing that you took away from that experience? Yeah, and uh, how to utilize a good job. Which, that, which I noticed. I yeah, noticed, man. Yeah, I've I've improved on that because, man, he's just popping me with that damn job. <laughs> First, pop, 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 and I'm like, I'm not used to it. I'm not right. used to sparring or being in a ring with other slick fighters. I'm used to sparring a typical Mexican style, come forward, right. or like a spin off of that type of style. His style was a little different. I'm not, it was, it threw me off the first two rounds because he's similar to me just as fast, but he was trying to box me. You know what I'm saying? Right. He was throwing jabs, so I had to make the adjustments after the first and the second round. You right. know, so I was very curious to see about the Regis fight because Regis is a softball. So I'm like, okay, is he going to keep that head down or is he going to bring it up? Right. Honestly, yeah. What a great I want to talk about your last fight. Okay. You know, first one this year. Did you did you feel that you had my, maybe a little bit of ring rust? Because I'll tell you right now, you did not look like it. They were mentioning it in the commentary that you were off for some time and that ring rust could set in. But honestly, I didn't see it. I saw a very new and improved, uh, different boxer okay. from 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 years ago. Honestly, you're really coming into your own. That fight, I want to break it down. You know, round by round, it was only two, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, you know, you're very, you're very calm. You're very calm. I noticed. Um, you know, how do you, how do you stay calm in those situations? And do you find it um, harder or easier now that you've been in the game long enough to get get your nerves down when you're fighting in front of those big crowds again? I've been fighting for 14 years. I've I've been raised as like a gladiator Spartan from America, you know. I've my whole life has been about that about the fight game. Right. Doesn't matter what happens in the ring, I know I can handle it. You could right. throw me to the wolves, you could throw me to the sharks, I'll be fine. I know how to weather the storm. The first thing that was on my mind was I wanted to look impressive, but I didn't right. want to impress that I was gonna be impressive, but when I seen how slow my opponent was, I knew I had him. Yeah. The only way for him to hit me is for me to stay right there. Yes, I noticed that. I yeah. noticed that. When I noticed he couldn't hit me on his own, he only hit me. And when I engaged and I stayed there too long, I'm like, oh, no, nah, I'm going to pick you apart. <laughs> I'm not going to cross this line. And the difference between me and other, like, you could say slip fighters right. is that pain. Like, I want to. Not trying to sound like a weirdo, but I, I, I want to hurt you and get you out of there. I don't want to keep you there long. That's right. not, not my thing. I'm pretty old school. It's like, okay, box, box, box. But I'm going to beat you up. Yeah, yeah. Bring, so, bring, bring that old school boxing back. Yeah. The old yeah, style of fighting. And people, definitely you, you're bringing it. Yeah, people, they always wonder about punching power. And some guys are like one-hitter sleepers. Me, I never cared about being a one-hitter uh, sleeper. I'm the type of guy where I'd rather beat you up. I know right. if I can beat you up, I could get the knockout. Either yeah. I'm going to catch you with a body shot, you're going to fall asleep, or the referee's going to show mercy, and that's that's what happened. Is, is that your favorite? Is the body shot the favorite? No, my favorite is when the referee shows mercy. Like when yeah. it's uh, 30, 40 punches, and I'm um, putting my will on you. Right. Of and by applying my will on my opponent and that's my favorite part of it right so, so what was the game plan going into that last fight just just bring it why i knew the guy supposedly is supposed to be a hard puncher he had the knockouts out of 14 wins yeah i knew that i couldn't well i could have stayed right there but i would have made the fight harder right you know? and i'm from california so a lot of my style comes from um like a mexican style somewhere right. i like to hang but i know that wasn't the right the right choice for me. So when I went out there, I'm like, okay, let me use my speed. That's my advantage. And, then, my, and then when I felt this power, I'm like, okay, this is not much. Because I've been in there with punches, but he's not fast enough. You know, right. a fast, hard puncher is more dangerous than a slow, hard puncher to me. Yes. yes. Right, that's, that's, 
That like that is explosive and set traps. It could give you nightmares. Yeah, like you, you can definitely see. You can see the traps you're setting, man. I can see them. Definitely becoming a Jedi. That's for real, yeah. man. You are you you are a Jedi of this division, man. Uh, yo, I see big things for you in the future. Um, what's uh, what's the plan going to look like for 2024? How many times are you expecting to get in there? I believe at least four. Four at times. Four, Next fight is going to be January, February. Around that time, maybe I'll be under the undercard of Connor Ben. We have we have the same manager named Charlie Sims. Okay. So it'd be easy to get on that card. The next fight, I believe, is a ten rounder. Okay. And I still think it's going to be maybe for a junior title. Ooh. That's well, that'll be good. So that, that'll, that'll, that'll be excellent. You know, man, I, I I swear the fact that you haven't fought so much in the last two years is you know the fans are just missing you. I'm telling you. <laughs> because when you came back, you came back and you just showed that dominance that I know you have in the ring. That I've been telling these people since, you know, you turned pro, you know. Thank yeah, you. You can really see that you are really coming into your own, man. Thank you. Thank you for all the support, man. I really appreciate it. I appreciate always, it. Always, always, man. I give the support where it needs to be due. Yeah. I got to show, you know, these. I got to show love to the youngins, man, that are coming up. You know, you are the future of boxing. You know, you're the future. You're, you're going to be the guy we're watching for the next 10 years. Hey, always uh, reach out to me. Uh, I always give you an interview. I yeah, really yo, I love it. I love it. I can't. I can't wait. I can't wait. And we got to get you to win this knockout of the week award too. Yeah, let's do it, bud. Let's yeah, man. It. Probably, probably in that next fight, we're gonna have to see it for sure. Yeah. So, um, what's uh, social life? You got one, or are you really just living in the gym these days? My past three weeks. If you like, follow me on Instagram on my stories. I've been a lot of places. Like I've been to Catalina. San Francisco, went to the amusement park yesterday with my siblings. I was basically being a chaperone. It was, it was like, <laughs> it don't expect nothing. Like, but my brothers, I roll with an iron fist. But my sisters, you know, I can't do nothing. So they kind of. Exactly. You know, exactly. They had been at the same spot for 40 minutes. Yeah. Walking towards this, but never was, you know. But I have a social life. I believe life is. I try to live my life fully, but there's time, but there's times where you have to be extreme and you have to cut everything off. Right. So I'm the type of fighter when I'm in camp, I'm in camp. I don't like to do nothing. I like to be in the gym. Leave me alone. I stay in the gym. I literally keep upstairs from the ring. And that's, that's how I live. Like the last five, six weeks of my camp, I want to be here. I don't want to be home. I don't want to do nothing. They don't talk to me. Leave me alone. It's I have to be away. I'm that type of guy. But out of camp, I love. I love life. I love dancing with people. I love going out. I don't drink. I don't smoke. But I like to have a good social life. Yeah, man. Have a good time. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So this last camp, how did you, like, run us through the last camp for this fight? The last camp was too damn long. I was <laughs> supposed to fight in August or September. And then it got pushed back to Whenever my fight was, uh, when was my last fight? November. It was November. Yeah, no, uh, November eighteenth, I believe it was. Okay, yeah, I got pushed back, so I was in like a fourteen week camp, and then halfway through it, I was sparring all these guys going ten rounds, and halfway through it, I got sick, so I had like bad chest chest con congestion. Yeah. All in my it was like six weeks out, and then I, it kind of worried us a little bit because I just started getting tired out of nowhere, but. Took some medicine, everything got back on track. We finished hard. Did you find it hard to uh, to bounce back after that that like hospital stay and medical stay? No, because I took some prescription medicine. I did this like online doctor told him my symptoms. Went to the CVS, got yeah. my blood, and I was good. About that week, I was good. I got my energy back, and I was killing it in sparring. Awesome, yeah. Snow. What else has been going on in the two years, man? It's a long time, man. A long time. Any any other sparring stories? Any, any great uh, great sparring that you've had other than Haney? Um, been sparring all the Russians and Filipinos and wild card. All them guys. Man, the Filipinos, I tell you, they have these monster tree trunks of legs. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> they can I really sit down on those punches, eh? Oh, my God, dude. It's true. I was sparring. <laughs> Sparring these guys and the it's like missiles going past your freaking head, dude. It's like 
Like, even if you want to test yourself, spark some Filipinos. They're going to give you some work. Really? You know? eh? So they're, 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 they're the work, they're the workhorses, eh? the sparring world? No, it's not the work rate. That's the problem. It's the natural gifts that they have. Okay. Like I, Filipinos and Puerto Ricans are one of the hardest punches I've been in there with. You know, rest in peace to my friend Sammy, but he was a year younger than me, and he died in a motorcycle accident. Come yeah. So you hear that? Yeah, and our fathers used to train together, and his punching power was ridiculous. Like, he, I'm telling you, he had, like, hands of stone. It, like, Puerto Ricans, every Puerto Rican I've been in there with, they just, they hit hard. They hit, like, they have, like, one of the hardest punchers. Like, you know, um, Alfredo Gomez, or even yeah. the guy, Maralanga, or Felix Trinidad, they just yeah. fucking hard. And, like, it doesn't make <laughs> It makes it makes you really think, eh? When, when you get hit with one of those, yeah. And then the Filipinos, like I've sparred Marlon Zapatas, I've sparred Mark Masaya. Dude, they're heavy hitters. Yeah, you know, Mark. Yeah, Mark. Mark Masayo, He does look like he's got heavy hands, man. He, he had an amazing knockout like two days ago. Yeah, by the guy with a left hook. And I was, I looked, I showed my dad. I'm like, Dad, you had me sparring this guy at 18. <laughs> <laughs> I look back. I'm like. Do you even love me? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, he does. That's why he's putting you in there with him so early, right? Shit, like, damn, man. Like, you got to give me more props. Yeah. I was for, like, free a lot of times, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, for sure. that's the point. like I've been paid for spar, but now I don't like it. I don't like to get paid because it's, it's okay to be a spar partner, but I don't want to be a spar partner. Right. You know me? So I'll be sparring these fucking monsters. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So they, they can climb freaking coconut trees and yeah, the, but <laughs> they're just a different breed, man. That's what it is. Different breed, right? Uh, so what's, all, uh, what, what's the goal for the uh, the end of twenty twenty four? What what are you gonna set? What kind of goal are you gonna set for yourself for end of twenty twenty four? Hey man, the gold, the gold, the the belt. That's it, eh? Could be next year and the next year or early next year, but I'm right there. Yeah. I had a long layoff, but I've been working this whole time. This whole time has been a vacation for me. Yeah. So I don't believe it will be long for me to get my groove back. I already got my groove, but to get things going. Right. Step up, I'm going to get closer to that title shot, and I'm going to take it all. Definitely. And with your gym now joining the max room, the match room stable, that's going to be – you know, a lot of a lot of big opportunities for you. I think, you know, I don't think you're gonna have any trouble finding any more opponents. You know, it's just. Oh no, I still. I had a hard time. But I, <laughs> I I paid my opponent out of my own purse for him to accept the fight. Seriously, he wasn't gonna accept the fight because it wasn't enough, and he was. And already, like three, four guys said no before him. Wow. But you want to take it? So I'm like, all right. Boom, my purse. I gave him. Two thousand and five hundred dollars. Just out of your purse, just to join, eh? Didn't get in there. Yeah, I don't care about the money. Well, not yet. You know, I no, exactly. Exposure. It's not the most important thing to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I could get myself in a ring, then I know I'll start making money. But of I course, didn't... it'll all it'll all come. It'll all come in time. Man, I would have fought him for free if I had to. <laughs> Yo, and honestly, if you would have fought him for free, man, it was still a great a great opportunity, right? Honestly, he looked. You know, like you hear the commentary in the beginning of the fight and everything, and they're like, you know, oh, this is going to be a good test to see where you're at. I'll tell you, where you're at is far above where he is. I'll tell you. you. That's that. That's for sure. And I can't wait to see you more this year coming up, man. Uh, you know, four times. That's going to be a great, great, big yeah. difference from the last two years. The matchmakers like, dang, like we got to step up the competition because we were expecting this to be like a hard, tough eight-round fight for me. Right. So I'm glad I was able to impress the guys. Definitely, definitely. So you say your next fight's going to be a 10-rounder? Yes. yes. So that's going to be the first one. So what are some of the preparations that you might take to do that, you know, considering it's going to be a couple extra rounds? A round, man. So I right now we're dropping the intensity, increasing the volume, and then when we get closer in camp, we're going to drop the volume, increase the intensity, meaning we're going to – Let's say if I do 10, 12 rounds on the bag, we're going to make it shorter. It's about eight or five, but hard. Okay. And 
have to play it by play because my body is my temple, my health. My body can fail on me if I'm not doing the right things, like drinking right. enough water. So that's what kind of scares me is my body. My body right. just show up. So I have to properly stretch and eat the right things. And So what's, and, what, what, what's the eating habit like? Like you, I, I have bad eating habits. It's that I have to eat more. That's my right. I have to eat more, and I got to eat higher quality food. Right. That's like avocado, nuts, good meats. Good good proteins. Oh, stuff like that. Like, I very um, low body fat percentage. Right. Do you you take, like, like any supplements or stuff like that, or are you just strictly, like, food kind of diet kind of guy? I'm usually food and diet, but at the time, I'm taking a multivitamin, but I'm not on supplements. But when camp gets really hard, and I feel like I'm out of breath, like, not out of breath, um, second winded. Right. Like I feel hard and I feel second winded throughout the day. That's a sign to me I have to take supplements like creatine. Right. Not to feel, but to act as like a style recovery, recovery for myself. Right, right. So who would be the dream fight next year if you could have it? Dream fight next year. Dream fight next year. First off, I want the belt, whoever I could get the belt from. It could be WBC, IBF, whoever the champions are. It's constantly changing. But my dream, after I get my belt and I move up to 35, I would love to take out Pitbull Cruz. Honestly, I think that would be a brilliant fight. He is definitely uh, he's definitely the energizer buddy when it comes to work. Yeah. He, does, he does move forward a lot. You know, he I, does throw those. Um, I will be respectful, but I don't think much of him. I don't think a guy his height should be fighting at 135. He's like 5'2". Yeah. You know, very tiny. And I think it's kind of like you're just being fat. You don't want to lose weight. You know? <laughs> Not disciplined enough. So he should fight at like 122, 126 at the most. And even his last fight with my friend Gio Body, i seen a lot of flaws in there, a lot of errors and all. I would love that fight. Excellent. That'd be, a, that'd be an awesome fight, man. I'll tell you, that'd be one to uh, to watch for sure. Definitely your footwork would come into a big, big play yeah. right there. You know, being able to, man, he's spinning out like a ballerina these days, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you let you light on those feet. No wonder you love dancing. Eh? You take all those ladies out and spin them like that too. I love dancing. Recently, I've been learning how to do uh, salsa and like bachata dancing. So my yeah. foot uh, should have improved. You know, I should get yeah. like <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome do you find uh do you find you're really coming into your own now like with strength wise do you find that you're getting more of that that becoming a man that's what yeah. it is yeah it's becoming older my body's filling out you know i'm getting a little more wider backs widening out so yo abs are looking like a washboard <laughs> you know how hard is it to maintain those abs very easy. I've I've had them since the summer of 2010. <laughs> okay, okay. I was in the shower and I got out. I got out the shower. I was a little eight year old. My dad was like, "Oh shit, you got abs." Yeah. And I really, oh well, like he said, six pack. I didn't know what a six pack was. Like I thought it was like beer or something. You're right. But looked at me and I'm like, "Yeah, I've been at these," and yeah. that just and a part of who I who I am. Yeah, man. Forever. Definitely. Well, Jalen, I'm not going to keep you too much longer, brother. Um, What I want to do is just, you know, for all these young kids out here watching, just give them some advice, what they need to do to follow in, you know, kind of your footsteps. What what, what, what should they do if they want to be you? Man, what the advice I give to the youngsters is be yourself, be honest, be strong, believe in God, fear God, know that God is always watching. Don't do bad things. Don't lie. Don't cheat people. Be honest, and your life will be good. You know, Excellent. people want to always say, good guys finish last. No, pushovers finish last. But if you're a man and you got principle and you carry yourself well, people will respect you. You know, you have to be a soldier, but you also have to be a good man. You got to have principle. Certain things you don't do. You know, you don't do anything for fame and money all that stuff is cheap you gotta have honor in this world and i feel my generation likes that they like principle you know yeah you know i do find that i do find that they do lack principle man it's uh 
it's it's a sad thing, but you know, as long as they have people like you, you know, in this game that they could look up to, who do have the values of these older kids, you know, maybe there is a hope for your generation, you know. Definitely, yeah. um, yo, how's your dad doing, man? Last uh, he was on oh. here for your first interview. He was he. Yeah, well, yeah, I think he was on with you. Oh, um, he was here. He left um like an hour ago. He was here. Yeah, he's doing well. Let's yeah, go. We had- the ER, he had a problem with his appendix. Ooh. So, yeah, we had that taken care of. He should be having surgery soon, but my father, he's good. He had his um, 41st birthday, so he's finally in his 40s. Well, okay. yeah, that's uh, that's that's a boat that I'm on already. I've been, I've been there. <laughs> you know what, though? 40s fun, I'm going to tell you. The 40s are fun. At this at this point at this point you're established enough where you can enjoy yourself so yeah but he has you that uh, he's constantly uh, you know with and 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 you know backing you and pushing you to do what you want and it's great man it's great honestly so next fight January February uh, definitely I can't wait to see you get in there man and bang him out and uh, yeah I'd love to see that strap around your waist by the end of 2024 man for sure I, you know. You're deserving of it, man. I've been telling people this. I've been telling people about you for a long time. And hopefully they listen this time when I say this. People out there watching, man, right here is the real deal, people. The real deal. Skywalker, man, the Jedi. I really appreciate that. Yo, no worries. I appreciate you too, man. Thank you for taking the time out. I'll let you get back to it. You know, you're still at the gym. I know you're uh, you're, you're, you're a bit of a gym. What's that? I'm Canada right now. Yeah, I'm up in Canada, baby. It's it's snowing like a it's, it's not snowing yet, but it <laughs> out to the Canadian fans. Much love. I love yeah. to go out today, maybe do some hunting. If I learn how to do that, uh, let's do it. Yo, if you if you up if you up in Canada in Toronto, yo, hit me up. We'll take you hunting for sure. We'll get okay. you, we'll get you some guns and we'll uh, we'll go out and shoot some things. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, so I'll let you get back to it, brother. It was great talking to you, man. I will always be in touch. You know that. I'm always watching you from the background. Talk and fight. You know, we're behind you all the way 100%. And uh, you know what? The future is yours, man. It's just what you you. Uh, you make of it, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. So next time. Yep. All right, brother. Have a good one. Good. All right. Peace. Bye. To all the talk and fight fans, that's it, man. Our man, Jalen Skywalker, the Jedi of the featherweight division, undefeated, 12-0-1. You know what it is, man. He was here live for an interview. We've been following this kid for time. I've been telling you guys for time. Listen when I tell you, the future of boxing is already here. You just got to know who to watch, and I'm the guy to tell you. So make sure you tune in next time for Knuckle Up with Mike Orr. You know what it is. Your man with his ears to the ground finding the new prospects for you to watch for the future of boxing. You know what it is, man. I'll see you next time. Fighting solves everything. Remember that. Knuckle up. We'll see you again.